Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture, and here he is, Michael Savage. I think uh, what I would do is to have rich people pay more to make sure that hardworking young people can go to college. And what I would do is to say, we're going to go back to the level of deductions that were permitted when Ronald Reagan was president. Uh, and I think this will be an important issue to a lot of students and their families around the country. I think we can build a big movement that demands more help. Welcome to the Savage Nation. Of course, what she should do is go all the way and follow the Castro brothers and steal all the money of all the taxpayers. Take the houses, take the cars while you're at it, Hillary. Don't just tax the rich, and of course, not you and your husband. You're not the rich, of course. You're the poor downtrodden. Just tax everyone in the middle class. Destroy the middle class the way your friends in Cuba have done. And then you'll be part of the new world order that the Pope will be happy to bless. Welcome to the Savage Nation. Here's a couple of headlines that I think are worthy of discussion. You know about the missing emails. That's a big story, but no one's going to really, no one expects it to uh, result in any problems for Hillary. She's above the law. As you well know, power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely. They own the courts and the judges. They own the Justice Department. It's all a sham. And the only reason the FBI stepped in, in my humble opinion, is to make her look better, not worse. You see, you don't even understand this. This is a triple game here. They, oh, we're going to get to the bottom of it. They're going to discover that she was actually doing something good for America. That's what's coming. No one said that yet except me. So there it is. Number two, Hillary will be totally blackmailable if elected. A friend of mine sent me an email saying, what nobody is talking about, but what everyone needs to worry about is that Hillary will be totally blackmailable if she's elected. Do you understand that? I'll explain why later on the Savage Nation. Topic two, a new poll. Uh, here we go again. A new poll, blah, 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 blah. Take a guess what tops America's, Americans' uh, concerns. Terrorism, mainly Islamic State. The state of Islam that Obama says doesn't exist and has nothing to do with Islam. The number two issue after terrorism is immigration. Immigration is a big problem to everyone except Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama and, of course, the fraudulent Democrat Socialist Islamist Party. And now number three on the Savage Nation, only in San Francisco, Stolen car suspect falls off the Bay Bridge evading police. A woman, probably a crack uh, head, wrecked a stolen car on one of the bridges early Wednesday morning. And as she was being held by a California Higher Patrol officer, probably, I don't know who the CHP officer was, probably not one of the big men. I would think it would be one of the new hirees in the CHP who couldn't hold on to a dumbbell. The perpetrator fell 70 feet from the bridge to the water, and got away. Now, wait a minute. The story gets even better. She falls 70 feet into the water, the crackhead, and apparently she survived. Some motorists reported seeing a woman soaking wet standing on the north side of the bridge near the toll plaza trying to flag down traffic. And wait, it gets even better. A dump truck driver later showed up at the CHP's Oakland office saying he had picked up the woman near the Bay Bridge, but was unaware of her exploits until hearing news reports after he dropped her off at an undisclosed location. Wait, it gets even better. So now the CHP is looking for the woman. Are you ready for why? Not to arrest her for stealing a car and crashing it into the bridge. CHP officer Daniel Hill said, we would like to find her, obviously, most notably, because we'd like to make sure that she's okay. So you see, in San Francisco, crime pays. It's the obverse of everything you learned. Topic number three in the Savage Nation. Fidel Castro, who owes U.S. citizens $7 billion, demands millions from Obama. Topic number four on the Savage Nation. Fargo and West Fargo. You know where that is, don't you? You ever hear of a place called Fargo? There was once a movie done about Fargo, North Dakota. 
Well, the Lutheran Social Services racketeers, excuse me, I shouldn't say that. Remember I told you that the Baptist family services are making billions a year in bringing in refugees because they make money on servicing the refugees? Well, not to be outdone is the Lutheran Social Services of North Dakota. So they're bringing in refugees. Are you ready from where into this area where they will never acclimatize? Take a guess where the refugees will come from. Somalia, Iraq, and Congo. They'll fit right in. They'll fit right in on, in Obama's new America. And now if that's not enough for you in the Savage Nation, for those of you who think that, uh, let's put it to you this way, all ethnic groups are better than Americans because they're all more sensitive. As you well know, the liberals travel the world. They bow wherever they go in Asia thinking that bowing is required. The Asians look at them like they're insane because they are. Well, here's a little story for those of you who believe that all in the other worlds are better than this world. Comes to us from Breitbart in England. Halal slaughterhouse where staff were caught abusing animals closes down. Outrageous footage shows the sensitive Muslim slaughterers kicking animals in the face, smashing the animals into solid objects head first, picking animals up and throwing them by their legs, fleeces, throats and ears. Now, you see, halal law requires abattoirs to stun animals before slaughter to prevent unnecessary suffering. But some exemptions for Jewish and Muslim throwbacks, they don't have to do that. They're allowed to torture the animals because that's the way it says it's supposed to be done 5,000 years ago. And so over three days in December, activists from Animal Aid, God bless them, used hidden cameras to record footage at the Muslim halal slaughterhouse. And you want to hear what they found? A worker hacking and sawing at animals' throats in direct contravention of Islamic practice. A sheep, or well, many sheep being kicked in the face and head, lifted by their ears, legs, or fleeces, and thrown into solid structures. A worker standing on the neck of a conscious sheep and bouncing up and down. Halal staff erupting into laughter over a sheep bleeding to death, with spectacles drawn around her eyes in green paint as she bleated and died and bled out. Employees of the halal slaughterhouse taunting and frightening animals by waving knives, smacking them on the head and shouting at them. Now, I know many of you will say they're just animals, have fun, but you see, I'm not that kind of guy. I think the opposite is true, and I think that anyone who does this to an animal should be given an eye for an eye a tooth for a tooth, and a slap in the head for a slap in the head. And those are the wonderful headlines of this hell that God has created called Earth. The phone number is 855-407-282. This is the one and only Savage Nation. Any topic is fair game. It's open mic to mic Friday. Let's go to WMAL, line three. Sylvia, what's on your mind? Go ahead. Hello, Dr. Savage. I just wanted to say I was stunned by... Uh, hypocrite Clinton's remarks referencing the wealthy as if she isn't one of them. I mean, it's no, no, she's not. You don't understand. She isn't personally wealthy. Most of the money gets siphoned into the library. That's how they avoid paying taxes. And then the library pays for their travel and entertainment. God knows what else. Maybe painting their their uh, cottages. Uh, and the way it works is they only take a salary upon which they pay taxes. So she really isn't rich. It's the Clinton Library that's actually rich. So she's really one of the uh, downtrodden in America, and therefore it's, it's fair game for her to attack the rich. The same way Fidel Castro attacked the rich in order to foment a revolution. It's simple. She's using the same playbook. That's why I'm playing Cuban music today. Don't be shocked by this. It's such an outrage, Dr. No, don't be outraged. Nothing Hillary does can be outrageous because, after all, she's a woman. And as we well know, women are oppressed minorities, and they have certain uh, uh, special privileges that men don't have. And since, I guess, women have been downtrodden for eons, uh, she's allowed to get away with lying. She's allowed to get away with sharing classified, top-secret information. Because she really didn't know it was classified when it was classified. In fact, she'll prove that it wasn't classified when it was classified. It wasn't top-secret. And as I told you, don't get too excited yet. This is all a sham. The FBI moved in in order to suddenly discover just around election time that not only was there nothing top secret on the top secret communications, 
but it was actually of benefit to America. She was trying to save America in the top secret sharing and trying to spare America from any pain. It's that simple. It's all uh, set up for that. 855-407-282. Corey on WABC, welcome to the Savage Nation. What topic caught your attention today? Dr. Savage, well, the lady jumping off the bridge in San Francisco. I don't know who that is. I have no idea. But, Robert, you caught the person, the crazy man? Yes, yeah, a crazy man from New York. See, they're getting jealous in New York, so they're calling from the other shows because they know I'm better than them, and they know I'm defeating them in ratings, so they're having their minions call the show, which is good. That's a good thing. That hasn't happened in 10 years, by the way. The guy with the wig in New York who has these people who call up shows. Another one with a wig. We're focused on Donald Trump's hair. You're not focused on the, on the, uh, on the other one with a wig, the balloon man. I mean, that's an amazing story unto itself. Why doesn't someone see what's underneath that wig? Can you imagine being in Howard Stern's dressing room in the morning when he has to look at himself without his wig? Can you imagine what that does to that man? KCMO, Chris, what's on your mind? Go ahead, please. Hey, yes, sir, Dr. Savage. Uh, I was just going to comment that the uh, reason, big reason I think Hitler is getting away with a lot of this stuff is because, remember, the FBI files that she had for a year and a half that mysteriously reappeared on her coffee table. She just got dirt on everything. Well, okay, people are still talking about that. I remember that. It's something we've talked about. We know that she's above the law, and we know that uh, absolute power corrupts absolutely, but we also know that the American people don't trust her, don't like her, don't want her, wouldn't vote for her, which is why they're taking the old war horse, the Buick LeSabre, uh, uh, off the shelf, and uh, his name is Joe Biden. Can you imagine running an old rusty Buick against a Republican candidate? That's like a car show, and finding a rusted Buick, a 1965 Buick Riviera, uh, in a garage somewhere and trying to give it a paint job and running it as a new car. That's Joe Biden. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Your Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust for tangible assets, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. I think uh, what I would do is to have rich people pay more to make sure that hardworking young people can go to college. And what I would do is to say, we're going to go back to the level of deductions that were permitted when Ronald Reagan was president. Uh, and I think this will be an important issue to a lot of students and their families around the country. I think we can build a big movement that demands more help. I started out to go to Cuba, and little did I know Cuba would be coming to me. All right, phone number 855-407-282. Hypocrisy has no limits when it comes to Hillary Clinton, as we well know. So I think I'm just going to keep playing Cuban music since I grew up on Cuban music in New York City. Many a happy night spent in dance clubs as a youth, a wayward youth in uh, nightclubs on Broadway listening to Cuban Panamanian music. And hearing some of the greats in in the field, some of the greatest uh, musicians, those who would, uh, actually they were pre-Castro musicians, all of them. They had uh, left Cuba before the revolution, and they were fabulous musicians. As you know, the music changed to a great extent. It's still pretty good after the uh, dictatorship emerged. And maybe as a result of the uh, thawing of relations between ourselves and the Cuban dictatorship, we will soon be uh, hearing new uh, Cuban music here in America. We'll be seeing 1950s cars arriving on our shores with parts from uh, God knows where. I don't know why anyone would want a 1950s car from Cuba since the parts have been mixed and matched and made up out of anything they can make it up out of, whether it's uh, sheep droppings or cardboard. I mean, if you want a 55 Buick with a sheep dropping cardboard fender, I know where I can buy one for you in the streets of Havana because that's all you're going to get there. But uh, let's hear some Fajada de Pone Agatha. Fajada de Pone Agatha on the Savage Nation or Santiago de Cuba de Benemone. Why must you always assume that someone has a political orientation at, at age three? Most people are not very political, by the way, when they're younger. Okay, I like the, the flute is what I like. How dare you go off on a track like that? 
Why don't you stick to the main train? This used to carry me to heaven itself. He was the best. Fajardo was the greatest. I went up to Jose Fajardo once in one of the nightclubs, and I said to him, where do you get the music from? How do you come up with these tunes? And he was a, a heavy set fellow. He played a wooden flute. Listen to this. Listen to those notes. Where do you get these tunes from, Mr. Fajardo, in the middle of a dance during a break? And he looked down at the kid and he said, I listen to the little birdies in the village. Now, I don't know that he was telling the truth, but you know, sometimes I listen to the little birdies in my village and I hear this. Let's hear the music. So we are, I'm sure we will be seeing the worst of Cuba arriving on our shores. I'm sure that Castro will be dumping the prisoners and the perverts on us again as part of his exchange with America. It'll be another Mariel boat lift, only this time it'll be called uh, Refugees Seeking Asylum. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. It's an indescribable soul. Something missing from American voices. There's no soul in rap music. It's thug, it's thug music. This is different, you understand? All right, whatever. I'm not a, a musicologist, but my knowledge extends into the area of music as well. Nevertheless, Guantanamera is a fabulous song from the island of Cuba. And uh, the Cuban people are wonderful people. I've suffered terribly under these two dictators for, God, what is it, 40 some odd years now? And the Castro stole most of the property and the, pro, the, the productive citizens have been under their thumb. That's why they're some of the richest men on earth are the Castros. This is how communism works. And we have it on a minor scale in America as we see the wealthy senators uh, in America, the wealthy senators and Congress people in the, worth billions of dollars, either directly with their mates, you know, doing contracts. Same thing as the Cuban uh, government, only it's a little more masked here, you know. There it's not masked, it's unmasked. They just steal it from you. And that's where we're going unless it's reversed. And that's what this election is about. Uh, coming up, frankly, in November. We all, not, not this November, next November uh, 2016. We all know that. We have a clear choice between continuing on the road to perdition or rescuing America from this road to perdition by electing an American rather than a communist. We have lived through a communist dictatorship in this country <clears throat> for six straight years. <clears throat> People will say, you crazy, it's not communism. Well, it is. Crony capitalism and communism are sisters under a different face because even in Cuba there are wealthy families those who uh, cooperated with the Castros retained their wealth and those who didn't had their wealth stolen I can tell you stories about what uh, communism did in Vietnam if you'd like to hear it many of you don't know that the war in Vietnam was about uh, the same principles uh, at work incidentally I know a gentleman who was uh, a very very nice man he flew in the South Vietnamese Air Force You'd never know it looking at him. He's a humble, small man, weighs about 100 pounds. He had come from a wealthy family in, in uh, South Vietnam that had owned vast rubber plantations that they had built up over several generations. And the communists stole the rubber plantations after the uh, Vietnam War, making the family penniless. You say, well, they deserved it. Well, if that's what you say, then that's what's coming to America because people will have the same thing happen here. Uh, Obama is absolutely of the same order as a Ho Chi Minh. There's no difference between him and Ho Chi Minh, except that Ho Chi Minh was probably more honorable uh, than Barack Obama. And Hillary is no different. She's even worse than Obama because she's more hidden than Obama is, if you can believe that. So the alternative is a naked capitalist like Donald Trump. Nevertheless, I didn't want to get into the 2016 election. I told you I wouldn't do it. It's too far away. However, I got into it anyway because... I've been working on this problem for about 25 years and the sin qua known of all of my thinking on it and the marriage between the socialists and the Islamists in America and the world and what they're doing to us can be found in my opus uh, called Government Zero, which I'm not going to read to you because it's not published yet. It's only available on Amazon.com, Amazon. And the, the reason it's such an important book is because it spells out the secret relationship between the so-called leftists or socialists and the Islamists. You think that they're not one and the same. I show how in every department, 
and in every journalistic enterprise in America, there is a seamless, seamless interaction between the socialists and the Islamists in Government Zero. It's that simple. That's what it's about. 855-400-7282 is my phone number. This is the Savage Nation. Mark on W, ABC in New York, line two. Go ahead, what's on your mind? Right, this is Mark, police officer, 20 years. Uh, what prompted me to call, and I thought I never would call your show, was the uh, thing you did just now on the cruelty to the animals. I myself have five animals, my wife and I. And you talk about Teddy all the time, looking in the dog's eyes. Uh, I don't know how it correlates and how widely accepted it is in these countries, but, you know, my old Italian grandfather used to say, a person who does not have compassion for animals or children doesn't have a soul. And again, you know, you, I guess it ties into soul, what you just said. By the way, great. That's right. Uh, Ma right. I talk about soul a lot on the show, something that's not even discussed in America anymore since the soul has gone out of the country. I was talking about a halal slaughterhouse secretly filmed abusing animals in England, in North Yorkshire, called Bowwood Yorkshire Lamb. And what they did to these animals is so heartbreaking that you ask yourself, I think what you're saying is how could a human being do this is what you're saying, right? What does somebody derive from that? As a matter of fact, let me finish up my thought by saying... Oh, Mark, God. they're sadists. Don't you understand what sadists are? You're a, a, a cop, for God's sakes. There are sick people out there, and many of them go into slaughterhouses to get pleasure. They derive pleasure from, from scaring and hurting animals. I'd like to actually be kept in a room with them, two, yeah. two, two, two souls in the room, me and my 170-pound mastiff. Give me, give, me, give me them three at a time, and let's see if they uh, want to raise a knife to, to that dog. I'll show you what he does. A worker standing on the neck of a conscious sheep and bouncing up and down. Nice. Staff erupting, uh, Muslim staff erupting into laughter over a sheep bleeding to death with eyeglasses drawn around her eyes in green paint as she died. Employees taunting and frightening animals by waving knives, smacking them on the head and shouting at them. Can you believe this? No, well, it's sickening, and I read it for a reason. The reason is I'm sick of it. And you know what bothers me? This halal code comes from the kosher food laws. They didn't invent it. They copied it. And according to the kosher food laws, animals are supposed to be killed quickly with a single sweep of a surgically sharp knife. The knife cannot be uh, uh, serrated. It cannot be old. It cannot be rusty. The animals are not allowed to see the knife before they are slaughtered or witness the death of other animals. It is completely ignored both in kosher slaughterhouses and in halal slaughterhouses. Make no mistake about it. It's one of the greatest tragedies in terms of abuse in our country right now. It's worthy of an entire novel. It would make people scream and demand changes to these archaic uh, slaughtering methods. It's that simple. Go visit a slaughterhouse one day. I did it once in Fiji. I never wanted to go back. It's not, as, it's not as though I became a vegetarian, but I will tell you as I... Uh, they, they create the, uh, what do you call it? You know, like they push it into a, a, a series of uh, fences and they go up to the guy with the apron, with the, the nail gun. They're turning to their friends. They're crying to their friends. Their friends are defecating knowing they're going to be killed. And you tell me a cow doesn't know it's going to be killed? You tell me a cow is not a conscious animal? You tell me the animal doesn't suffer when it's killed? The animal doesn't fear when it's killed? And you tell me that when you eat the meat of such a slaughtered animal, you're not picking up the vibes of that animal? I would disagree with you. Now, I am not a vegetarian, but I eat very, very little animal meat. I'll be honest with you. I try to eat as little as possible. I, I do, not because I'm a good person. It's just that I have found that I can feel the vibes of the dead animal in my body. I'm not so sure I want to feel it. Anyway, I don't want to go into that right now. It's kind of a horrible subject. A man is an omnivore. He is designed, we are designed for eating meat, incidentally. We're not designed to be vegetarians. In fact, if you, I'll, I'll just go into it for one minute since I know this very well. If you look at the, the structure of your teeth, you have both ripping and tearing teeth, such as the canines, which are made for tearing flesh. So you're designed, you're evolved for tearing flesh, like any other beast of prey. You also have grinding teeth in the back, 
which are those made for grinding up vegetable matter and grains such as uh, such as it is, and and vegetable matter. And so we're omnivores. We're meant to eat both, uh, you know, meat and grain and fruits and vegetables. And so we're not really designed solely for one or the other. It is true you can live wholly on vegetables if you wish and be quite strong and, and healthy. Uh, but that's not uh, e e um, evolutionary. We're not ev evolutionarily designed to be vegetarians. You can do so on an ethical or, or moral basis if you wish. All right, I don't want to even get into diet, truthfully. I only brought up the slaughter story for a reason, which is the hypocrisy of uh, this situation. Now, I brought up another story, which is that Hillary can be blackmailed if elected. Why? Well, we're talking about email gate. What was on that server that she erased? Who, who captured what's on the server? I mean, she's obviously lying about what was on the server because she's got something to hide. Why would she erase it to begin with if there was nothing that could compromise her on it? Let's just use common sense for a minute. If there was nothing on the server that was uh, embarrassing or potentially incriminating, why would she have erased it? So obviously, she is lying about what was on the server. And there will be a congressional hearing, and so she could say, well, this, and she could say that. Now, who also captured what was on the server? Well, let's say the Chinese and the Russians, since they've been hacking our computers and the government computers, which are like sieves. She was no doubt a secretary of state, one of the top intelligence targets in the world, amongst the top 10, you would think. So I would think Chinese and Russian hackers would have focused on accessing her communications. And so if you ask any security expert, as the one who sent me this says, it's a virtual certainty that Chinese and Russians both gained access to Hillary's server and all of her emails. And so what does that mean? It means that China and Russia are probably praying that she becomes president of the United States because then they will own her. See how that works? Of course, you're not gonna hear that from Jake Tapperhead. He has the brains of a woodpecker, which is why the Republicans picked him to be the next moderator of the next so-called Republican debate. They would pick someone with a woodpecker's brain to be the moderator because they're made up of wooden heads themselves. And as you know, wood loves wood. Okay, what do you want to talk about in the Savage Nation? Uh, I want to talk about the Castros in Cuba for a minute because the Cuban government, if you want to call it that, the dictatorship is more uh, accurate, is demanding reparations. They're saying we owe them millions for the embargo that previous administrations had had in place. Not the great American patriot Barack Obama who has opened up relations with Cuba. But they don't talk about the money that is owed to Americans and others, Cuban, other, other Cubans, Cuban Americans and others, who lost approximately $7 billion in American assets in the years following the Cuban Revolution. The Joint Corporate Committee on Cuban Claims an organization working to advocate for the rights of those U.S. citizens who lost their property and assets in Cuba, estimates that the government stole $1.8 billion in funds, which represents, listen to this, only the value of the property at the time it was seized 40 years ago. Now, Spanish newspaper El País has found that this total of $1.8 billion seized by the Castros back in the 50s, if you adjust it for inflation, represents seven billion dollars owed to nearly six thousand american individuals and companies and the corporations hurt by this massive theft they say includes coca-cola colgate palmolive exxon and texaco that does not include the millions stolen from cuban citizens much of which is now owed to u.s citizen descendants of those who had their property stolen and these are issues that will never be discussed by ketchup carry you understand that and now what about dissidents who largely oppose Obama's legitimization of the Castro regime? Were they at the ceremony today? No, they were banned from the ceremony by John Kerry and uh, Barack Obama. 855-407-282 is the phone number. We're moving right along on Open Mic to Mike Friday. We have wonderful, wonderful callers. We have wonderful music. In fact, as we go out, Robert, on this little segment, let's give them a little taste of Casarita Velarina by Orquesta Aragón de Cuba, Casarita Velarina. There we go. On the car. See, after the revolution in America, I will be a disc jockey. They will find me more useful to keep be keeping me alive. 
as I play Cuban and Chinese music for you with my uh, sonorous voice. I'll just become a... I can't speak. I don't like this song. I don't care at all. No, stop it. Stop it. No good. When I come back, we'll play Pare Cochero by Orquesta Aragon right here on the Savage Nation. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust to protect my wealth with gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. 55 minutes after the hour, the Savage Nation. And because uh, like cures like, you know what I'm saying? It's a homeopathic principle. And uh, one dictator understands another better than you can imagine. That's why there's such a chord between this administration and the dictators of the world. That's why they hate Israel. The only democracy in the Middle East they hate. Dictatorships like Iran they love. Dictatorships like Cuba they love and Israel they hate. This is uh, your president and John Kerry and the whole Democrat socialist machine at work. That's all. Now, when was when were diplomatic ties with Havana uh, go when they go bad? 1959 after the Cuban Revolution, Ch President Dwight D. Eisenhower severed diplomatic ties with Havana as relations soured soon after the 59 Cuban Revelation Revolution. I don't think you know one part of this that's interesting. Initially, Castro was not did not announce himself as a uh, communist. Did you know that? He came to power saying he would overthrow Batista because Batista was a corrupt dictator and he was going to represent the people of Cuba and he'd represent the poor. He never said he was a communist. In that sense, he's identical to Obama and Hillary Clinton. They have the same exact play playbook, which is there for the downtrodden and the poor, and they're going to take money out of politics. They're going to make sure that everything is equal. This is how it all starts. But eventually the money is sucked up to the top, whether directly, overtly in Cuba, or covertly as it is here in America, with front groups such as libraries, business deals for husbands and wives, jobs for relatives, jobs in the media for daughters who are dumb as a doorpost. This is corruption. You get it? It's the savage nation. Get it? Well, you can by being here or be nowhere. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. Step right up. Big sale on green cards. Big sale on green cards. Southeastern U.S. will be invaded by even more millions of illegals now. More Democrat voters, this time from Cuba. And by the way, you don't know this. There's a law on the books right now which says that any Cuban who reaches dry land in the U.S. is granted immediate asylum. It's been that way for 50 years. Has that been rescinded by the great President Obama? In other words, that was set up 50 years ago so that people who uh, wanted freedom could try to get to America and they'd be granted asylum. It made sense then because not many people were able to get out of the prison camp called Cuba. But if that law is not rescinded, it means that any Cuban now who comes to America, and it could be millions of them, will be granted asylum. So is it possible that Obama is doing this for yet more voters in Florida and Texas and Louisiana in order to permanently transform those states into, well, you know what, you see how this works. Okay, my friends, that's what's going on. It's always something you don't see that matters, and we are on the Savage Nation today talking, of course, about the big story, which is the normalization of relations with Cuba, which has uh, been a while now, and the hoisting of the U.S. flag. 
at the embassy in Cuba for the first time in 54 years. What's surprising is that uh, the flag, the U.S. flag was raised over the newly reopened American embassy, and it was not the rainbow flag. Because I think the rainbow flag more represents, more typically represents this administration than the stars and stripes. I would think that the stars and stripes, which are kind of antiquated, I mean, when you think about it, stands for militarism, nationalism, patriotism. It's everything that Obama finds repugnant. While the rainbow flag represents everything sensitive and kind in the world. Anyway, just a random thought. Peter on WABC, welcome to the Savage Nation. What are your thoughts on this memorial? memorable day in world history i don't like it my cousins grew up in havana they were americans they lived in havana their father owned all the supermarkets in havana he came to work one day and there were three military people a captain or, or whatever general sitting at his desk and two armed officers and he was told he was fired from his own company that he built up for 25 or 30 years and well, he was probably, but wasn't he a capitalist pig who stole the supermarkets by exploiting the poor workers and providing them with food? I mean, this is the thinking of the, of the uh, left wing in America. They think anyone who builds anything is a capitalist pig. Of course, they don't know what happens when governments take over the supermarkets. What you find is one rancid chicken and a salami hanging in the, in the butcher shop. Two or three years before Castro came to power, he was, as an American, had gone to the State Department to ask what they thought of Castro because he wanted to reinvest in the stores and refurb rebuild them. And they told him he's going to be great for us, we're all going to be fine, well, you know the rest. Now, let me go forward. Oh, wait, hold, that's an important point. I said in the last hour that Castro initially did not run as a communist revolutionary. He ran as a, an equalizer along the lines of a Bernie Sanders or Hillary Clinton. He said he wanted to get the corruption out of Cuba. Of course, soon after becoming the dictator of Cuba, he then declared himself to be a, a communist. That's what happened. Absolutely. My kid sister was caught in the revolution, had a machine gun dropped in her lap. She was visiting our cousins. And... and uh, they never could. They could never get any money out of you. Well, there are lawyers right now who represent people like your family who had their their property expropriated by the gangster regime. Do you think that this government would actually ever help you collect that money? I don't think so. I think Obama would rather pay reparations to Cuba than make sure that Cuba pays reparations to citizens of America and elsewhere who had their land stolen. And by the way, Michael, the people I know who were Cubans, real Cubans, came here in the 50s and 60s, do not ever want to go back as long as they don't have family there. How could they go back to a dictatorship run by two brothers? Terrible. By the way... Who would want, who would want to live in such a dictatorship? We see what's going on in this country, how we've lost so many of our freedoms under this uh, wonderful, wonderful man of equality, Barack Obama. We all feel the noose tightening around our neck. We all feel it. Now, just imagine if it was actually state policy to deny you freedom of speech, freedom of the press, et cetera, freedom of assembly, because that's what Cuban life is like right now. By the way. Okay, I know, I know this subject quite well. And I also know that we have, we are living through a minor communist revolution in the United States of America along the lines of the Castros. Property has not yet been seized, but freedoms have been seized. I've told you that before. Freedoms have been seized and other freedoms have been threatened. Property has not yet been seized. However, if Bernie Sanders, God forbid, or Hillary Clinton were to win, anything is liable to happen. Glenn on WABC, welcome to the program. What's on your mind? Hey, uh, how can you be for Donald Trump but be against Bernie Sanders? I don't get the logic there. Wait, wait, wait. Hold, well, sir, how can I be for Donald Trump and against Bernie Sanders? Yeah, this is because I'm against I'm against communism. Well, that's the end of the that's the question. Bernie Sanders has been a lifetime communist. How can I be against him? He's been a lifetime consistent person. That's what he's been. As for Trump, every year. Well, Hit, 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 Hitler was a consistent person. What do you mean that makes him good because he was a consistent communist? Why don't you compare? No, no, wait a minute. You just said that one of Sanders' qualities is that he's been consistent. He was a member of the Young Socialist League when he was a young, crazy Marxist, and he's still a young socialist revolutionary, a member of the Spartacus League. They stand for the seizure of private property. 
a crackdown on uh, freedom of speech, a crackdown on freedom of assembly. They're fascists. Don't you understand that? Are you what's the matter? What's the matter? Your talking points fell out of your hand. You no. don't understand a difference. Don't you understand a difference between freedom and slavery? Yeah, I do. Slavery is wage slavery, which is what's happening now, where the rich have all the money. Ah, uh, get off. In other words, you don't have a good job, so you think anyone who has a better job is, is a rich person. Is that right? Um, I have a good job, but I see people struggling all the time. I know people struggling all the time. And, and tell me when there was never any struggle in the world, and tell me where there is no struggle in the world. We, we as Americans are spoiled to begin with. First well, you're changing the subject. You're, you're speaking as though struggle is not part of the human condition. Show me where there is no struggle on the planet to live life through struggle and pain and suffering and you learn I just said to you that struggle is part of the human condition and the communists have always falsely argued that they can eliminate struggle by making things fair that's never happened wherever the communists have taken over it's gotten worse not better for the average person All right. what's wrong with having a social safety net what's wrong with social security What's well, you mean we don't have a social safety net? Wait a minute, sir. You're arguing in a vacuum. We have a social safety net. We have many of them. What more do you want? How much more of it of a safety net do you want in the country? You have free medical care. You have social security. Everything is free for the poor. 100 million Americans don't work. They're just lazy bums. How much more do you think we, the working taxpayers, can take of this? Wow, so you're going to call 100 million people lazy bums. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Well, what are you saying? That they're all productive citizens? No, not all are productive citizens. A lot of them are just taking advantage of the system on welfare. All right, well, we agree on that. And, and how, how about the 14 million Americans who are now on federal disability? Are you telling me all of them are really disabled and unable to work? Do you really believe that? No, they're not. No, they're not. There are people that are taking advantage, but then there's others that actually need it. All right, thanks for the call. This is one of these reducto ad absurdum arguments that go nowhere. There's no way to go with the argument. Another one of these young socialists who think that Bernie Sanders is telling him the truth. Bernie Sanders is a cowardly Fidel Castro. Bernie Sanders is worse than Fidel Castro because at least Fidel Castro was militant and a military man who was willing to put his body on the line and went into the mountains of the Sierra Maestro uh, in order to fight his revolution. Bernie Sanders' revolution has always been fought uh, first on a mimeograph machine and then on a on a fax machine, and then later on on email. Bernie Sanders is a lifetime punk coward leftist of the lowest order. I could smell this guy from a thousand miles away. He's the worst thing America could ever have happen to them. And by the way, he has as much chance to become president as my dog Teddy does. In fact, I think if I ran Teddy as a write-in, he would attract more votes in the general election uh, than Bernie Sanders. The phone number here is 855-407-282. Let's go to the next caller, John on WMAL in Washington, D.C. John, what's on your mind? Go ahead, please. Good afternoon. Uh, I'm for Teddy, by the way. So anyway, let's go. Uh, I am. I'm, for, I'm Teddy for president. Absolutely. <laughs> Listen, I got a uh, Cuba story and a Vietnam story. Uh, both involved my dad. May I can you them both and, uh, very briefly? Fire. I'll start with, I'll start with Cuba. Uh, my dad was on the JCS during the 1963 Cuban Missile Crisis, and there were two carrier battle groups off the Bay of Pigs, and my dad was there listening to it, and Dean Rusk persuaded uh, President Kennedy to withdraw. That's the story behind that. It was Dean Rusk. And uh, spinning back to uh, many years earlier, when my father was a uh, commissioned second lieutenant in the infantry, he went, uh, didn't like it, and went down to uh, San Antonio, Texas, got his wings in the Army Air Corps, promptly resigned and was flying for Pan American before World War II in Africa and Asia. And uh, he flew two, uh, two trips with medical supplies into Hanoi, and one guy there was so grateful on both occasions that uh, he invited my dad to lunch. That guy's name was uh, Ho Chi Minh. My father's impressions of him were that he was one of the most impressive men he ever met. He seemed to be an expert on the U.S. Constitution and told my father he wanted the con U.S. Constitution. I mean, the Constitution for Vietnam modeled, modeled after the U.S. My dad... Oh, oh, well, but wait, let's slow down. We could argue about how great Ho Chi Minh was for the Vietnamese people. However, you and I both know that the current Vietnamese government is not modeled on the U.S. It doesn't function according to the U.S. Constitution at all. 
It is a communist dictatorship with a capitalist economy along the lines of, uh, of, of China. In other words, they very wisely maintained a dictatorship, a communist dictatorship, but they were smart enough communists, they were smarter than Hillary Clinton and Bernie Sanders put together to understand that free market capitalism is better for an economy than a constrained state-run econ uh, economy. Well, Ho Chi Minh wanted my uh, dad to relay to the State Department that he would like U.S. help to get rid of the French and Indochina. My dad didn't take the information, but had it sent to the State Department, and it was uh, John Foster Dulles, Secretary of State. All right, all right but w look, I appreciate the personal element of the story, and I'm not trying to negate it. Your father sounds like a great hero. I think the point of the story is that Ho Chi Minh was a fine man. Is that it? Well, he... Uh, he much like Castro, who wasn't a communist at first, uh, became one when he, he couldn't get U.S. help. That was the only part. Ah, of so the, your implication is that we drove them into communism. Right, right. All right, so, we're, so another, again, the U.S. is bad. <laughs> so whichever way you cut it, no matter how you cut it, any time you, you turn on the radio, you're going to have a caller trying to argue whether cleverly, like this gentleman just did, or crudely like the butchers who normally call, call talk radio that America is bad. See, I'm on the other side. And I'll tell you what it is. I'll make it real simple. It's America right or wrong. It's that simple. You don't like it, move to Cuba. You don't like it, move to Vietnam. You don't like it, move to China. You don't like it, try to apply for a visa to Russia. It's America right or wrong. I am so sick and tired of all of these people who hate my country. It makes me sick. America right or wrong, which is why I'm trying to warn you, it's going to get a lot worse in the next number of months that this dictatorship has ticking away to 2016. It's all about the cozy secret relationship between the socialist slash communist bloc in America and the Islamist bloc around the world. I spell it out in great detail in Government Zero which can only be bought on Amazon.com. Trust me, you're not going to want to miss the blockbuster. I'll be back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust to protect my wealth. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. Well, here's a little breaking news for those of you who are ISIS sympathizers. ISIS leader Abu Bakr al baghdadi sexually abused American hostage Kyla Mueller and then killed her. There's your kinder and gentler Islamist at work. Before her death earlier this year, American hostage Kyla Mueller was repeatedly raped by the top leader of ISIS, Abu Bakr al baghdadi according to counterterrorism officials. I don't know whether it's halal to rape a woman, but then again, they do it on a regular basis to eight-year-old Azidi and Christian girls that they capture. I guess they find uh, the right to do it somewhere in their holy book. But then again, they're not Muslims. You understand they've hijacked uh, the religion of Islam. They're not really Islamic, although it's called the Islamic State. Don't be confused by them. It's not really the Islamic State, even though it's called ICE, IS now. ICE is uh, something else. Immigration and uh, c Customs Enforcement, ha, 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 that's a joke. But ICE, they've, they've shortened it from ISIS to ICE to make it easier for you to remember. I stands for Islamic and S stands for state. But according to our government, I does not stand for Islamic. We don't know what it stands for. Perhaps it's sort of like an iPhone. It's like iPhone. Does I stand for Islam? No. I don't know what I stands for, but it's called an iPhone. So according to Obama, the Islamic state is not really the Islamic state. It's an I state. And I don't know what the I stands for on a phone, Robert. Do you know what I stands for on an iPhone? Does anyone know what I stands for on an iPhone? I never even asked. What does it mean? I? Like my phone. It's like my phone. It's like iPhone. Like, oh, I make a phone call. So I could stand for I state, meaning it's now their own. It's, it's a state of mind. It's not an Islamic state. It's a state of mind. Uh, they didn't even hijack Islam because it just stands for themselves. See, I mean, that, that's the way to look. You're not looking at things properly. Anyway, she was the property of the leader of ISIS. He raped her repeatedly, and then he killed her. That's all. Nice folks. 855-400-7282 is the phone number. I'm here only to give you the best news of the day. To make your day feel better, I'm telling you about 
the torture of animals in a slaughterhouse in England uh, by practitioners of the halal method of slaughter, hacking and sawing animals' throats, kicking the animals in the face and head, the halal staff laughing over a sheep bleeding to death with eyeglasses drawn around their eyes in green paint. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. Savage. This was uh, Machito at his worst. All right, let's move on to the news. Pistol Whip Detective says he didn't shoot attacker because of headlines. Thank you, Barack Obama and Al Sharpton. A Birmingham, Alabama police detective who was pistol whipped unconscious today said that he hesitated to use force because he didn't want to be accused of needlessly killing an unarmed man. Uh, the officer said a lot of officers are being too cautious because of what's going on in the media. I hesitated because I didn't want to be in the media like I am right now. So he was in Birmingham, Alabama's enclave of Roebuck, and uh, he was at a traffic stop, and the man, the unnamed man, no race, uh, no name, no description of the man, attacked him during a traffic stop. And normally the man would have been shot dead. But because of Barack Obama and Al Sharpton, the man took the officer's gun away and beat him up with it, almost killed him. That's all. So thanks, Al. You've done your job for the National Action Network. Is that what you mean by National Action Network, Al? One social media user wrote, quote, pistol whipped his A to sleep. And so as a result, police now are afraid to do their job. Because the immoral, inhumane element of society is now on the aggression as a result of Barack Obama, Eric Holder, and Al Sharpton. He hesitated, and he got beaten up in Birmingham, Alabama. He hesitated to shoot. This is going on across America as a result of the war on police being conducted by the Socialist Communist uh, Administration. 855-407-282. Let's go to WJR in Detroit. William, which topic attracted your attention today? Hey, Dr. Savage, uh, you were talking about the halal meats, and I live out... The, you mean the, wait, the torture of animals in this one halal slaughterhouse, to be specific, in England, filmed abusing animals, has been put out of business. So what is your topic? What I've heard is the reason they torture the animals, and I don't believe, I don't know if this is true, I don't think it is, it's something they're making up, uh, in their Muslim religion, but if they torture the animals and they terrify them, it changes something before they die in their enzymes or their hormones or something, and that's the way they want the animals to die, terrified, because they think it transfers something to them and makes them a mighty, mighty warrior or something. I, I, don't even know how to, I don't even know how to respond to that, but the films, the secretly recorded films, showed animals being kicked in the face, smashed into walls, head first, picked up by their legs, throats and ears and thrown, and uh, saw the throats cut off, kicked in the face and head, uh, it showed a Muslim worker standing on the neck of a conscious sheep, bouncing up and down. It showed the halal staff breaking into laughter over a sheep that was, whose throat was cut, bleeding to death, and they drew glasses on the sheep around her eyes in green paint, uh, other employees taunted and frightened animals by waving knives, smacked them on the head and shouting at them. This was in the one abattoir that was actually filmed. Uh, I don't know whether this is widespread, nor do I know if it's limited to England or the United States as well. But this company is out of business. It's dear Secret monitoring of the slaughterhouse, which this great group, Animal Aid, has been undertaken since 2009. And by the way, this is another fact, and it's an embarrassing one. Last year, 2.4 million sheep and goats were killed without being stunned in halal and Jewish abattoirs, according to the British Veterinary Association. 2.4 million animals, sheep and goats, were killed without first having been stunned, both in Jewish and halal abattoirs. It's barbaric. I don't care which religion is doing it. They should be punished to the full extent of the law if they are caught torturing uh, livestock. It's that simple. 855-407-282. WABC Lou, welcome to the show. What's on your mind? Go ahead, please. 
Uh, yes, uh, Dr. Savage. I, uh, I think there is actually a uh, smoking gun to be found with Hil- Hillary Clinton's blank server in that uh, what the uh, FBI uh, needs to do is investigate to see what the forensics are in that is it, it the server that is actually used. Now, what's interesting is she turns... Sir, sir wait, 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 let's slow down. Do you actually think that Obama's FBI cares to disclose what was on her emails? Do you actually believe that? Well, they don't need to disclose anything. All they need to do is... No, but why, would, why do you think that they seized her server? Do you think it was to help the American people get clarity on what she was covering up or to help cover it up? Just to shut everyone up. All right, so you're, you're making an, an argument that makes sense if you live in a democracy and an open government, but we don't. We've lost it under Obama. We do not live in an open society. We do not live in a democracy. We live in a, a, a quasi-democracy and a quasi-dictatorship. We're in a twilight zone now. It's as though America has been granted, everyone in America has been slipped to hypnotic in their drinking water, and they're watching the transformation of this great republic into a dictatorship. So I, I'm not optimistic, that's all. Let's go to line one. Jack on KSFO. Please don't call about Hillary's server. I'm not interested. Nothing's going to come of it. Next question. Jack, what's on your mind? I'm calling about Bernie Sanders. I'm a millennial. I'm 20 years old. I'm a big Donald Trump supporter. But I'll tell you, on Facebook, Twitter, my friends, everybody loves Bernie Sanders. And I think that he is becoming a real threat to win the presidency. And I think he's nah. not. You know, 100,000, 300,000, 500,000 doesn't make for an election. I, I don't think that if he, he, I don't think he could ever stand up to a debate with Donald Trump. Donald Trump would turn him into what he really is. He's a lifetime small man who has always attacked America. And I think it would come out. Frankly, I don't think we've actually seen all that there is to be seen about this little socialist from Union Square. I don't think that uh, Bernie Sanders could withstand the scrutiny that a federal campaign would uh, subject him to. I hope you're right. And here's the thing. With the amount of, of people becoming dependent on the government, I think it's, what, 50 or 60 million on, on uh, food stamps and welfare? He feeds off that. And so when a, pe- when a person sees, oh, Bernie Sanders, he's going he's gonna to put me on, I'm going to live off the government, I think more people are attracted to that. Well, you're right about that. That's right. Socialism is a great system until you run out of other people's money. And I'm quoting Margaret Thatcher right now. Uh, that's something that the millennials don't understand is that money doesn't grow on trees. Where does it come from? Where do the benefits come from, the so-called benefits? They're taken from the taxpayer. And what happens eventually is that you destroy the society by overtaxing people. And they don't understand that yet, but let them go take a job and they'll see where their tax money goes. Do these so-called millennials work for a living or they just send little texts to each other? Oh, text. It's tweet, it's, it's Facebook, Instagram, it's all that stuff. Yeah, you know, but a kid who's in college is one thing, but then they go out and get a job and they see what they can actually earn in the real world, and then they look at the paycheck, and then they suddenly become more of a realist at that point. I'm working as a tennis coach, and out of all, every paycheck, I'm, I make probably 300 a paycheck. Out of every paycheck, 100 is taken from that. And I don't oh, put my I, You know, that's not enough. You're, you're a rich pig. Why should you only pay 100 Why don't you pay 295 of it and, and be left with $5 so you could be homeless and you could share the homeless experience? Exactly. And, then you, then, you could live in, and then you could live in a doghouse in your parents' backyard. That sounds awesome. That's, that's my dream. That's a dream house. <laughs> Stop it. Uh, what would a doghouse dog in the streets of New York rent for today? I mean... 50,000 a month, I'd say. 50? <laughs> I actually saw a picture of a, uh, in, it was a Southern California city. They created large dog houses for the homeless and put them in the streets of the city, and the homeless crawled into them to live in. That's how crazy this is. Can you believe this? It's, it's complete madness. I, I can't believe it. We're turning into a, in, into a Eastern Europe country, you know. You know, in Sweden, their uh, income tax is 50%. I have a friend from Sweden. His dad, the doctor, fifty percent of the income is going to the government. I, that's mind blowing. Wait, hum, wait, how much did you say goes to the government? Fifty percent of the income. Oh, right, hold 50%. on. Oh, really? I'm a I'm a citizen of California. I pay thirty nine percent federal, and I pay thirteen percent state. I pay more money than a Swede does. I'm living in a socialist nation. 
it's, it's social. So, yeah, state tax is 13% under Jerry Brown, so he can build a railroad to nowhere. A trillion dollar railroad to nowhere. Where is the money going? The roads are broken. The streets are uninhabitable. The streets are running with crime. And I'm supposed to believe the tax money is not being siphoned off? You know what's interesting about the railroad to nowhere in California? The high-speed rail that Governor Brown, the great salvation of Amer American manhood, uh, created. This is amazing. There's a TV show, I think it's True Detective, which I've watched on HBO for a while now. Or I don't know which channel it's on. It was awful last time. I'm glad it's over, where Vince Vaughn gets left in the desert and all. But it's all about the corruption of a high-speed rail line in central California. The whole series was written about, it was like uh, art imitating life, about the corruption, about the politicians buying land adjacent to the rail corridor prior to announcing the rail corridor. Don't you see what socialists do? All you've got to do is visit San Francisco with a flower in your hair. I'll be right back on The Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282, SAVAGE. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. It is time to talk about mental health for a moment. Here is an amazingly positive story just out in the L.A. Times. And for those of you who are vitamin doubters, uh, I'm sorry to tell you, you're a fool. For those of you who are vitamin takers, I'm here to tell you, you're doing the right thing. New study, big study, major study, fish oil helps minimize disorders for those at risk of schizophrenia, study finds, and it's a major study. As long as seven years after getting a 12-week course of omega-3 fatty acid supplements, New research has found that young people at very high risk of developing schizophrenia were likely, much less likely, than those who did not get fish oils to develop full-blown psychosis or to manifest a range of psychiatric disorders which afflict such young people. This is new research. It's the first to document rigorously the beneficial impact of fish oil supplements as a means of preventing severe psychiatric disease. And you can read uh, the study yourself, and I linked it up on michaelsavage.com. It comes from a major scientific uh, journal. And it was focused on young people who were vulnerable to developing severe mental illness. And the subjects were between the ages of 13 and 25, who were already reporting low-level or transient hallucinations or delusional thinking, or who had a family history of severe mental illness, and who's functioning at school, work, or home had begun to de deteriorate. In other words, the natural voter uh, log of the Democrat Party. Maybe the hope for America would be to be to require uh, that all Democrats take fish oils. I don't know. That's a secondary question. Maybe we could save America if we required all Democrats to take fish oils for six months prior to an election. Anyway, on average, young people who fell into one or more of these categories were thought to have a third. And I don't want to read the study. It's a big deal because every other day we read studies which debunk the value of vitamin C, vitamin E, B vitamins and fish oils. And I've always tried to show you the, that real science holds the opposite to be true. Now, what's a, the dose that was used in this study? Fish oil, which contains 700 milligrams of EPA and 480 milligrams of DHA for 12 weeks. And they were compared with another set of subjects who got a placebo capsule uh, every day. And you can see the results. This is amazing. I like fish oils myself. I mean, if you're in talk radio, you're already marginal from the pressure we're under and putting up with Democrats, socialists, who call, who can't reason. But the fact of the matter is, I've used fish oils for about uh, eight years, and I found that they balanced out my... They've greatly lowered my triglyceride levels. Phenomenal. Nothing else explains it. And my LDL and my HDL are upside down. I don't take a Lipitor. I don't take any of those statins because they affect my neurotransmitters, my muscles rather, and I cannot take statin drugs, even though my blood lipids are horrendous, except for one factor in the blood lipid chemistry, which you cannot correct through any uh, supplement or drug, which I inherited. That's why I'm still alive. It's, there's one fraction 
in, in the lipid profile that no one even tests for, but because I'm an expert in the field, I researched this and I looked for this, this particular fraction in myself, and it explains, it's like the magic bullet that I've always had inherently. Doesn't mean I'm gonna live you know, forever, but I'm living, I'm 20 years older than I should have been according to all uh, genetic information and all uh, uh, blood, inf uh, blood information that I've had. I I'm 20 years older than, than I should have been. There's only one explanation. Yes, I take mega doses of vitamin C and vitamin E and I live on garlic and I live on certain supplements that I have for 40 years. There's absolute truth in that. And I know it accounts for my uh, good looks, my, my health to date and my longevity. I know that. I bicycle every day, but I don't do a fanatic bicycling. I do a, a low grade, I do what old man Kellogg did, who invented the Kellogg cornflake in Battle Creek, Michigan, which is he bicycled to town every day in a suit on a flat road one mile away, and he said that the bicycling helped his equilibrium. We've forgotten that equilibrium is a big part of our health. Chinese medicine knows that. We think that just pounding ourselves into the pavement is good for our health, but I'm afraid to tell you that there are many heroic and sad deaths from people over-exercising. And as Mark Twain said, I get my exercise by walking to the funerals of my more athletic friends. And on that pleasant note, I leave you for a moment or two as I go to the radio refrigerator for my dose of fish oils. I'll be right back. Be here or be nowhere. Warning. The Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of unprotected talk, borders, language, culture. And here he is, Michael Savage. Welcome to hour number three of the Savage Nation. And remember, August is the Sunday of the year. In other words, how many people do you think are on vacation in August? Many people. And do you think that the audience for talk radio is the same in August that it is in September, October? Of course it isn't. Just as if people are on vacation, they're traveling. So it's a different pace. People are interested in different things. And it's not going to be the same uh, audience nor the same subject matter for that regard, no matter how alarming the news may be. And by the way, one of the reasons the uh, FBI suddenly released the information on the server in August, even though they've had it since May, hello, can you put two and two together? That's like releasing information Friday at midnight to release this information on Hillary's server this week. It's Friday at midnight. That's what it is. Most people don't even know what happened. If you said Hillary's server to the average millennial out there, they would think you're talking about her waiter. If you were to say to the average millennial, do you know what Hillary had on her server? They would say, I don't know, what does she eat? What would our server be bringing her? That's all, they don't know what you're talking about. And by the way, speaking about servers and things like that, why is it that the, um, uh, the Islamic State is beating us in cyber warfare? Why is it that America is actually falling behind in cyber warfare against Russia and China. It looks like that to me. Why is it that so many of these fanatical Muslim murderers in ISIS, or ICE, whatever they call themselves now, are so adept at using the internet to recruit, to hack? How could they be so smart? And why do these smart people use all of their genius to disrupt and kill? Think about that, how perverted that is, that people who are that clever who can hack, et cetera, are using it for the detriment of humanity rather than the betterment of humanity. And in the long run, the only way we're gonna win this cyber war is to bring back the draft amongst tech workers only. If you were to ask me where we needed a draft, it would not be amongst the lump and proletariat because there's plenty of that to be found. No, I think they need to start bringing back the draft and begin with Yahoo, uh, Google, and, and companies like that, Microsoft, I think they need to siphon off a good percentage of their workers and put them into the military in order to fight the cyber war. No one's ever suggested that. What is the likelihood of it happening? Very low right now, but it's gonna be required very soon. 
the only way we are going to defeat these fanatical haters of humanity, these murderers in these organizations, is to take the best and brightest that we have, who in the past would have been in the military, putting in a number of years in order to help the nation defend itself. And if the war is now being fought online, then online is where we have to recruit and we have to get them from uh, the companies that have siphoned off the best intelligence in these areas. Google, Yahoo, Microsoft need to give us 20% of their workers uh, a year in order to, de to defeat the, uh, the enemy. That's what's going to have to happen. But of course, they own the government, so it's not going to happen too, uh, too uh, quickly. And they can't bring in enough people from India fast enough to lower their... Uh, you get the picture. Anyway, that's just a random thought here or there. Hillary uh, drone, blah, blah, top secret emails, O'Malley and Sanders. Are the There's no real news. It's the same news now for a week. Biden now they're bringing up. That's like a 1965 Buick Riviera that was rusting out in, in someone's back, in your grandfather's backyard. And it was under a, a car cover that was flapping in the wind that was torn. And someone said, oh, my God, the front runner Hillary, who was like a 1945 Buick Riviera is not we can't run her the wheels are off that one we can't even find wheels for the 45 Buick called Hillary so what's the next one now they're going to the junkyard they're finding the Biden car and they're taking the cover off it and it's not bad they're saying wait a minute there's a little rust here we can use bon Bondo <laughs> we can use Bondo we can replace the drum they still make drum brakes for the uh for the 65, they're running around now looking if they can find brakes for, the Bu for that Buick called Biden. It's unbelievable. The Democrat Party is in complete disarray. They don't have a viable candidate, incidentally. That's the big secret. None of them are vi viable. None of them can win. O'Malley? Are you joking? O'Malley's going to win? The American Putin? O'Malley looks like Putin with the, with the abs and the, uh, the athleticism. And until he actually wrestles a Siberian ti tiger, I'm not so sure he has any chance of winning. All right, uh, 855 472 WABC, Mike, what's the topic? Go ahead, please. Uh, as a major error made in equating Muslim and Judaism, and especially in the slaughter uh, of almost 4,000 years, the most humane slaughter ever came up to uh, humanity. The animal loses consciousness instantaneously. What you see after the twitching of the animal is only rigor mortis setting in. The animal, for all purposes, dead. Was well, well, hold on, oh. sir. Do you know what I, sir? Slow down. I'm talking about a company that was put out of business in England because a secret videotape caught the workers in the halal slaughterhouse torturing the animals. That was that story. What you created for? Because he said... Wait, sir, are, are you listening to... Mike, are you listening to anything I just said, or are you just talking? Well, you, you asked me to give me an opinion. No, I'm not asking for an opinion. I just said to you, there was a secret film made in a slaughterhouse in England. In the halal slaughterhouse, the animals were seen being abused. You're not saying they were not being abused, are you? No, I'm saying that's a Muslim way to slaughter. The Judaic way to slaughter is simply a slip, a slip of the jugular vein, which immediately causes it to lose consciousness. They do not step on the animal, kick on the animal, beat on the animal. The animal... No, oh, I understand that. Of course I understand that. However, I also made the point in this article that last year alone, 2.4 million sheep and goats were killed without being stunned, both in halal and Jewish abattoirs. And that vi violates Jewish law as well, isn't it? What does it? So you're saying it's okay to cut their throats without without stunning them? You don't have to stun them because the slaughter of the knife going across the jugular is instantaneously dead. There's no such a thing as bopping them or knocking them unconscious because that sometimes does not, does not work. The, the knife at the throat and the jugular it will cause instantaneously loss of consciousness. There will be no pain at all after that point. So it's a big difference. Are you sure of that? A hundred percent. Well, how do you know? You're not an animal. Call, well, call, call up and you find out. Call the Orthodox Union. They'll explain it fully and give you a lot, of, a lot more knowledge. I'm supposed, to, I'm supposed to listen to a rabbi tell me what an animal feels? 
he's making the slaughter, he knows what's going on with the animals. No, he, he doesn't know anything. He, he's a low, low grade rabbi who gets paid to do it. He does what he's told to make money. Please don't tell me that the animal feels no pain. I mean, any animal that has his throat cut is feeling some pain. Rabbi, if he doesn't go according to Jewish law, has the most. Well, all right, fine. We're arguing, we're splitting hairs right now. What I'm saying is that in this particular slaughterhouse, the animals were seen being tortured. Uh, I'm also saying that halal slaughter copies that of uh, kosher slaughter. It's a, a direct copy, by the way. It, it was written in the Torah, and then it's written in, the, in, the, in their laws. Same exact copy. doesn't mean they're practicing it in all cases. And that's what we're talking about. He was trying to make uh, animals suffer less. That's, all of, that's the whole point of it, is not to mock a religion, but to reduce the, the, the torture of animals. Muhammad is a completely different religion. That's well, let, let's talk about that for one minute. That's an interesting question. Of course, they're different religions. But do you know that people who eat halal meat will order kosher meat? Did you know that? Slaughtered by, by Jewish ritual slaughterers? Because it's a better form of killing the animal. It does it with no, but what I'm, sa what I'm saying is the kosher slaughter practices are acceptable to Muslims. You know that, don't you? Slaughter is not acceptable to Jews. They will never eat halal meat because they would consider it not kosher. What is so good about kosher meat, by the way? What makes it superior? What makes it superior? Because there's a thing of humanity. We in Judaism kept the laws, and animal rested on Saturday before thousands of years before even the animal people thought about uh, uh, treating animals properly. There's never such a thing of being... Well, you know, I, I'm an ac I actually trained in anthropology, and I remember reading um, a study on this many years ago that the kosher food laws, especially animal slaughter, rather, the laws were created to be a humane form of slaughter. It was to reduce the bloodlust in man as much as to relieve the, sluff, re <coughs> relieve the suffering in the animal. Did you know that? No, because the truth is... You have to know. Well, you know more than me. In other words, now you're an expert on what I just said. Now you're an expert in anthropology as well. I, I, I mean, what exactly is your background that you're such an expert on on animal feelings and animal slaughter? What do you actually do? I, I'm a graphic designer. But I, all right, I, fine. So I'm a talk show host who happens to be very well versed in many subjects, and one of them is in this subject. And as an expert in anthropology, I must tell you that there are experts who have studied this. And they were Jewish, by the way. Maybe they don't, don't come up to your standards of being kosher. But they said that in studying this, one of the reasons for kosher methods of slaughtering an animal was not only to reduce suffering in the animal, which is what I think you're saying you agree with, but also to reduce the bloodlust in man. And you, find, you don't find that... A, a reasonable statement? No, because if you study the Talmud, the Talmud says basically the whole Bible is one purpose. You have Can't you ever go beyond the holy book and live in the real world? Is it impossible for you to see anything outside of your religious books? I do. No, all right, well then, all right, I'm glad you listened to the show. I'm not here to mock anyone's religion, Jewish or Muslim or Christian or Hindu or Buddhist. But let me tell you something. There comes a time that even a modern Orthodox religious person has to take their eyes out of the holy book and look at the world in which they're living and ask themselves, how do these ancient laws apply in the world today? And are the laws still applicable with regard to food safety, to hygiene, to humanity, to the humane treatment of animals? Sometimes you have to come out of the ancient books to live in the modern world and survive and thrive in the modern world and to do less harm. You know, there's a saying, doctor, do no harm. One of the first laws is the Hippocratic Oath that a doctor takes. And the first law of medicine is doctor, do no harm. I would like to see that applied to religious laws as well, which is doctor, do no harm. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Hey, our Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com, the only company I trust for wealth insurance, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. It 
is uh, the Savage Nation. We're talking about my uh, unique ideas on the Savage Nation. That uh, my original idea to draft tech tech workers. <clears throat> you heard it first here. I made it up today. That we must start drafting tech workers out of Google or Yahoo, Microsoft, and companies like that, and get the best and the brightest in the tech world into the military, into intelligence services, in order to win the, these wars against ISIS. You may be saying, oh, I haven't heard that before. I didn't hear it from anyone. Well, you heard it from me. The most original thinker in America, Michael Savage. I, Michael Savage, am the most original sp thinker in the country. Now, you haven't heard me on television. You haven't heard, seen it written anywhere. It's the most original idea you've ever heard to defeat them. Joseph on WFTL, welcome to the program. Hi, Dr. Savage. Thank you for taking my call. And Long-time listener, first-time caller. Oh, please, jo well, Joseph, what's on your mind? Go ahead. So I want to reiterate what you just said and commend you, and I do think that you're one of the most unique um, thinkers in this country, and I was listening to your proposal about the draft for tech workers, and I just wanted to commend you, and you know that's the reason I keep on coming back to your show day after Joseph, day. Joseph, let me tell you, I, I came up with that idea while thinking about how we're going to win this war, the cyber war against... Hackers, the cyber war against ISIS, which is beating us to a pulp. And that's because we're not getting the best and brightest into the cyber worlds. They're going, they're being siphoned off by Microsoft, Google, Yahoo, Facebook, and these big companies uh, who pay them a lot of money. Well, I'm sorry. We're in a war for our survival. We need a draft. We don't need a generalized draft. We need a, spe a specialized draft aimed at tech workers only. That would give us the intelligence that we need to fight these uh, enemies of humanity. And I stand by that idea. And by the way, you heard it first in the Savage Nation, but you won't hear it last in the Savage Nation. It's an idea whose time has come. And it will eventually have to happen. That's the only way we're going to win. It's all in my book, Government Zero, by the way, which you can only find right now, not in bookstores yet, on, on Amazon.com. What's a shocker? You want to hear a shocker about that one? I only announced it yesterday. It's already number four in political books without even being sold anywhere. And uh, it, it's not a matter of money to me. I'm not building a beachside mansion. I don't need the money. I give the money away. It's a matter of saving America, government zero. Never forget what I just said to you. And the, uh, the other factor that you have to remember is, is that I have the Savage Scholarship Fund, where I am the only host in the United States of America, instead of just taking for myself, have given back I gave $100,000 to five kids, 20000 each. I've given away 10000 so far for year one to the five of them. There'll be another 10 to year two if they're still enrolled. And I hope to continue the Savage Scholarship Fund. And I'm going to donate any money that I receive in royalties from this book to the Savage Scholarship Fund. I make that commitment to you right now in the Savage Nation. It's that simple. I made it right now, right here on the Savage Nation, because I'd like to encourage others who uh, love America so much to do something for the kids of this country who can't afford to go to college. All right, but that's number one. But number two, I haven't finished up on this whole halal slaughter business. You have to understand uh, that humanity towards animals is a very important subject, and conservatives, unfortunately, don't get it. Many of them think that by being kind to animals, somehow they're diminishing human life. The exact opposite is true. And I cannot stand listening to, to oafs in the media who mock animals and make a joke of animals. There is great responsibility toward our, toward our animal friends. And the Jewish laws initiated this, pioneered it. Resting beasts of burden on the Sabbath. Not muzzling an ox while it threshes grain. Sending away a mother bird from the nest before collecting her eggs. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. Savage. You know, I stumbled into this whole issue of the, the humane treatment of animals, and I think it's a very important topic for a couple of reasons. Because there's a link between the way a society or a person treats animals and the way that society or that person treats other human beings. Plain and simple. Anyone who is cruel to a defenseless animal will undoubtedly also be a sadist and cruel to defenseless people. Anyone understands this. Now, the converse is not always true. 
those who love animals do not always value human life. Hitler loved animals. Hitler was a vegetarian. Did you know that? He wouldn't touch a piece of meat because he cried for the animal. Did you know that the vicious group PETA once wrote a letter to Yasser Arafat telling him that when he blows up a bus full of Jews, could he please not hurt any donkeys? The letter is no longer on their website but remains in the Internet Archive. Nevertheless, we're talking about the treatment of animals and uh, civilized treatment of animals and cruelty to animals. We in the West have a, a peculiar sensitivity to animals, as we should. And there's only one uh, religion on earth that hates dogs. I, that's something else you should re keep in mind that I know of. And, of course, they're not the only people on earth who, who misuse animals, incidentally. Just because the Bible gave us dominion over the earth did not mean that we have the right to cause indiscriminate pain and destruction. Yes, we're permitted to use animals for labor, such as an ox pulling something or a horse, uh, when we need it. But we're supposed to do so in a manner that causes the animal the least suffering. Now that brings us now to slaughtering. Kosher slaughtering was designed to be as fast and painless as, and as painless as possible. And if anything that occurred during the killing might cause pain, such as a dull knife, that would be illegal to the, to the slaughterers. However, I am sorry to tell you that was what was once uh, more humane is no longer humane, even amongst kosher slaughterers, because they are factory, they're factory farmed and factory slaughtered. It's not like the old days. People who eat kosher food think that they're eating more humanely slaughtered animals. It's absolutely not true anymore. Most of the animals are slaughtered in an industrialized manner, and a rabbi goes into the factory and gives a prayer and collects a check, and that's the end of it. Please, don't, don't confuse yourself and think that every animal is talked to and read a nursery rhyme. Uh, in Hebrew before it's slaughtered. It's not how it works. It's a factory job. They're slaughtered, they scream, they cry, they beg for their lives, they look at their friends, and they wish to God they weren't there and they die anyway. That's all. So eat meat if you want. I'm not telling you not to eat meat. I'm just telling you what you're eating. And that's the way it is. Everything wants to live. My father taught me that. I didn't know what he meant at the time, but I know what he means now. He said, look around, Michael. I was a little boy. He said, whatever you look at, everything wants to live. I said, what do you mean, Dad? He said, look at the ant. So he taught me not to step on ants. Kids don't know anything. Kids usually will run after an ant and step on it and crush it. Do you know that? They don't know any better. It takes a father or a mother to say, don't crush the ant. It's a living thing. God made it. Leave it alone. But kids basically, I'm sorry to tell you, it's the opposite of liberalism. Children are clueless as to these things. Children are wild animals. And if they have no, no teachings, no religion, no father, no mother teaching them right from wrong, what do they wind up with? They wind up killing, murdering, maiming, raping, burning. And you see cities going up in smoke because there's no fathers, no mothers, no church, nothing, no, no, nothing, no north, no south, no east, no west. So for us to sit here and discuss this is almost ludicrous in a way, but uh, I believe that it's worth talking about. What, just because the audience is diminished for this kind of discussion doesn't mean it's not a worthy discussion. And although it's late on a Friday, and although it's in the third hour on a Friday, and all the audience is smaller than it normally is during the, so what? Let's say the audience is X number of hundreds of thousands at any 15 minutes. I don't know what it is. So it's half that. It's still enough to fill two stadiums. Do you realize how large a talk radio audience actually is in the major leagues that I'm in? You take the top five hosts. We all have stadiums filled with people tuning in at any time. And what are they tuning in for? Some knowledge, a laugh, some hope, whatever it is, a hope and a prayer. So I can't just come on the air and, and fill up time with fluff. So we, somehow we stumbled into this halal thing that uh, I found because I'm an animal rights guy. I don't even know where the article is. It's a sad story. I don't know what I do. Here, Halal Slaughterhouse, where staff were caught abusing animals, closes down. It was up on Breitbart this morning. It was in Yorkshire, England. And they were, they were, I don't want to read it again, hurting the animals, and they were closed down for it. Uh, employees taunting frightened animals. The staff of killers 
caught on tape laughing over a sheep that was uh, bleeding to death with uh, eyeglasses drawn around their eyes in green paint. Sheep being kicked in the face and head, lifted up by their ears or legs and thrown into the side of the wall. Uh, a halal worker standing on the neck of a conscious sheep and bouncing up and down. All right, so it was closed down because there were, enough was enough. It was in this one place, you know. 855-407-282. And uh, animals are very important to us in America. Even if we eat some, we treat others with kid gloves. I'm sorry, with kid gloves. That's a funny phrase, with kid gloves. That's an animal itself. That's terrible. The bottom line is, is how people treat animals is how they treat other people. Basically, that's true. Not always. Some treat animals very well and are monsters to, pe to people like Hitler. J-R-W-E-G-O Radio in North Carolina. Thank you for listening and calling on the Savage Nation. What's, your, what's on your mind? Thank you, Dr. Savage. We appreciate you. Uh, African-American, conservative, love you, listen to you every day. There are three generations of you in my household that listen to you, Dr. Savage, and we appreciate what you're doing for this country. I wanted to point out that, listen, this whole nonsense, uh, just coming in late on Black Lives Matter, uh, these people uh, are just misguided, misdirected, uh, and really for them to say that uh, they're not, they're just hypocritical. They're not being truthful and honest because black lives really don't matter. Because if they did, they would be addressing issues on abortion, alcoholism, gang violence, domestic violence, homicides, and all of those kinds of things. <laughs> if black lives really did. Well, you see, that's something you can say that I can't say, but to me, all lives matter. All lives absent. Now, unfortunately, I was born in the 50s. I came up in a different generation and a different time uh, when uh, I had, you know, I had a two-parent home, a father and a mother that instilled values within me, you know, grew up in a Christian home. And so the way I see the world is not the way that this generation perceives the world today. They want to blame everybody, and, you know, they take absolutely no responsibility, no account. Well, that, I grew up at the same time you did. I had a strong set of parents who were in the house, and despite the thick and the thin of... Uh, what I lived through, what they lived through, they stuck, they stuck together, and they taught me right from wrong. Um, my father did it through logic, and my mother did it through a sense of compassion, and I think as a result, I wound up a more well-rounded person, as flawed as I am, and as incomplete as I am as a person. I feel that a show like this has to put some of that into the show, and I want to thank you uh, a million for being three generations of listeners. And uh, when the Government Zero book comes out, call back. I'll start giving them out at the beginning of September, okay? 855-400-7282. What do you think of my idea to draft tech workers into the military? Do you like that idea? In other words, you know, it's an interesting idea I stumbled upon, which I hint at in my book, Government Zero, but I didn't develop it as much as I did on this show. Why did I say that? We're losing the cyber war. ISIS is running rings around our cyber uh, uh, soldiers, if you want to. We have a whole staff of cyber warriors, but they're not up to the task because the smartest people in the, in the technical world, the smartest ones, are not in the military. I didn't say that they're dumb. I didn't say that they're, they're less than adequate. I didn't say that. But you and I both know that if you're a whiz kid in, in the world of uh, um, cyber, Internet, however you want to put it, you're going to take a job for the most money you could make. You're going to work for one of the big tech firms, Google, they're going to siphon you off, Yahoo, Microsoft, uh, Facebook, name it, I can't name them all. And I'm saying since we're losing the, war, the cyber war and we're, we're really imperiled and in, in, in danger in this country, uh, I don't know about you, but I, I'm worried about ISIS. I'm very concerned about the idiot running the country. I'm concerned about him not working, willing to use the word Islam. I'm terrified that he won't wake up to the threats that we are facing domestically from the operatives in this country. And if the cyber war is what we're losing, then you go where we have the, the greatest talent. And you go into these companies and you tell the owners, look, we've been very good to you. We're going to draft 10% of your best and brightest for a, a year. Temporary assignment to the military. They don't have to go to boot camp. Give them a 30-day program. They have to shave off the, uh, the the beard, du jour, that's popular in the Mission District of San Francisco, the, the hipster beard. They have to straighten out their acts, and they have to come in, and they have to help us win this war. What's wrong with that idea? 
Barry disagrees with me. Barry on KBOI Radio. Tell me why I'm wrong in that in that uh, idea. You're, this one you missed. You missed the boat. Uh, the truth of the matter is, is first of all, there are some really bright guys in the military that are software developers. But there's tons of tremendous consultants that are used all the time. They're used by those same companies, Google and various other companies. Uh, the, the best are basically consultants, and the military hires those consultants. I think the problem is the will, not the expertise. They just don't have the will to actually do the job what they're supposed but to do. But why should the Defense Department have to hire people uh, who are necessary for national defense? Don't you think we require a little more expertise in national defense today than we already have? Well, yeah, well, we, we, but we can get it, and we do get it through consultants. No, but, but, but we're not, wait, hold on. Oh, correct me if I'm mistaken. Aren't they winning, beating us in the cyber war? Because they want to. We don't want to. And that's our problem. And that's why you're our saying the reason we're lo you're saying the reason we're losing the cyber war, the reason our military and, and geniuses and defense intelligence agencies and why not cannot seem to stop the recruiting of fanatics in this country is because we don't want to. I don't think that we may we're making the effort. I know that business very, very well. And I'm telling you right now, the expertise are there. Is certainly there. We just don't want to do it. These people got to be directed in that direction. And uh, well, I accept your expertise. I'm not one of these people who thinks I know everything, although I may sound like that sometimes. Uh, yes, and I agree with you that there is no will to beat ISIS. There's no will to beat the Muslim fanatics, uh, the Islamic fanatics, however you want to put it. Obama has looked the other way. And so you're saying he actually wants us to lose the cyber war? He wants them to, to recruit in the country? I don't believe that. Into it. Look, our, our government has been, uh, the government files have been uh, checked, uh, taken and looked at by China and Russia. And uh, we're not really protecting this stuff the way we absolutely could. I know. I personally know that the expertise are there to stop this stuff. Well, then, how did Hillary get away with erasing her uh, her, her uh, what she what she lifted or, or or transmitted? If 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 we're so smart, how did she get away with it? What do you think was on those uh, satellite pictures? What what was that about? Just give us a shot in the dark. Uh, well, this is this is uh, this is a whole. She should be a, actually she should be in jail. That, it's treason what actually took place. So that's a whole. All right, but wait a minute. She she erased stuff that they caught. No one knows what she erased and why. We can only assume it's uh, embarrassing or indictable. But now we realize it was satellite data. What was on that satellite data, in your opinion? Well, they probably are looking at Iran and and uh, Iraq. Uh, they have uh, they're spotting the military uh, situation in Iraq. Uh, without a doubt, this, these are the places they're looking at. Uh, All right, so let's say she's Secretary of State, and it's like a, a show homeland, and you've got people focusing in on on a, on a site in Iran, and Hillary saw it on her on her uh, laptop and sent it to someone. She wasn't doing it nefariously. You're saying she was just doing it sloppily. Isn't that the issue? Well, the issue is is that other people can get into her her server. That was the real issue. It's not really protected as much as a government uh, service. Right, right, so what I'm saying is she wasn't committing espionage for a foreign entity. She was just transmitting information on a personal computer, which could have been hacked or looked at. So I would say it was a sloppy act, not, a, not an act of, uh, of, of uh, treason, wouldn't you say that? I would agree with you that it's probably not purposeful, but the un right. That's what I'm saying. I think people are rushing to judgment like she was a spy, Matahari. I don't see that at all. I think she was just being sloppy and lazy. It doesn't matter why she was doing it. It's still a crime. But, but I don't think there was any espionage involved. Do you? Uh, I don't, and I don't think she's capable of it. Even I don't think she's a bright woman, and I really don't think I, I unbelievable I accomplished. Well, you look, okay, well, you you made some very salient points here. You're saying the reason we don't need to draft them out of these tech companies is because we don't have the will to use them anyway. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Your Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust for tangible assets, gold and silver. Call 800-B-U-I-C-O-I-N. It is the Savage Nation. You know, you say it's August, and what are people interested in? They're interested in what's interesting. And somehow we stumbled into, I say we should consider drafting tech workers. Otherwise, we're going to lose the cyber war. And a man calls who knows the field and says, we're losing enough because we don't have the uh, 
technical expertise, but because Obama doesn't have the will to defeat ISIS and those who are hacking us. Interesting. And then I was talking about the humanity and humane laws to animals, and I was reading about Jewish laws about the treatment of animals. I didn't know any of this, really, because I noticed that most religious people don't have dogs, but it's not prohibited. In fact, uh, it is said that a person must feed his animals before he feeds himself, interpreting Deuteronomy. And Jewish law does not prohibit keeping pets. In fact, many observant Jews have dogs, cats, or other pets. That's another thing. Now, here's something that I just stumbled upon in reading this, which I found to be interesting because I've always felt weird about neutering animals. I don't like neutering dogs. It's against the Jewish law to neuter an animal. Did you know that? It's against Jewish. I'm not religious, okay, but put it to you that way. But I've always found it weird to, to neuter a pet. I know it's like you do it to keep the animal population down, but it's a violation of Jewish law to neuter a pet. The Torah prohibits castrating males of any species if you read Leviticus 22-24. This is interesting to me. As a matter of fact, docking the ears or tails of dogs are forbidden. Unless the dog had it done to them before you got it. My dog, Teddy, had his tail docked. I'd like to dock the person's hand or dock his tail. I'd like to dock the clock. It's the Savage Nation. I'm finished.